Hello, uh, my name is Jessica Ventura. I am currently a bilingual teacher at South Huntington School District. I'm also attending NYIT for my master's in bilingual school counseling. And I'm also an intern at NYIT. Currently, through this pandemic, I'm living at home, just trying to be healthy and that's that, right? <laughs> and so you mentioned you're a bilingual um, teacher. What other language do you teach? Um, so I teach all curriculum in Spanish. So math, science, social studies, literacy, reading, all that, everything is taught in Spanish. And what made you decide to pursue this profession? Ever since I was young, um, just, I guess, the only other career that I've seen other than my parents is actually teachers, because, you know, we we're always in school. Since I could remember, um, since I could write on little boards, I was like, I want to be a teacher, specifically bilingual, um, only because I was an ENL student growing up. I just growing up, I knew the difference between ENL and bilingual. Bilingual, you're actually learning all the, the curriculum in both languages, where ENL, you're actually just learning a second language, which brings me to school counseling. I know a lot of first generation or newcomer students, I feel like they don't have the opportunity when they're coming from a different country. They don't really get um, like the college experience. They don't get the support because there's always a language barrier between school counselors. Uh, which why I wanted to pursue school counseling. I love education. I will forever stay within education, but I feel like I also found, um, you know, a different passion um, to help uh, undocumented students because I feel like those are the students that are kind of pushed to the back or I feel like colleges almost make it impossible for them to go to college. And I feel like they need people to support, especially these minority groups, because I feel like not just them, but like there's a lot of groups, but specifically this uh, minority group. And what is your family background? Like, were you born yeah. in the state? I was born here um, in New York. Um, my family is Salvadorian, Honduran. Um, so I'm first generation college student. I'll be actually the first person to write to graduate uh, with my master's. So that's exciting. All my little cousins that are coming up behind me, including my brother, I'm pushing for college. I know a lot of people don't want to do college, which is fine. But just to let them know that there is help out there. And if they do want to do college, like there is financial help, there is support. We just need to provide them with those resources. So you mentioned you're a first generation student. I want to ask, what was the college application like when you were going through it? Because did your parents have some knowledge of it, even though they didn't go to school? Or was it kind of like you were thrown into the wolves and you didn't receive a lot of help at school and everything? My parents, actually, they didn't make it far in education, um, probably as far as second grade. And then, the, you know, they were started to work in the field. So when I started the college process, I feel I didn't get much support from my school counselor. I was one of those students that were kind of like pushed. Oh, she doesn't have like those grades to go to college. But I never really had that, I guess, relationship with my school counselor. Although um, I do remember meeting with her to apply for one college. And now looking back, uh, she knew I was never going to get into that college, but she never said that. She still let me apply for it, and which is kind of like, I'm glad she did that so I would get that experience. But that was my only experience. Like, I've never really got support with financial aid. I had no idea what financial aid was. As far as college fairs, I knew there were like people there talking about colleges, but I was never really pushed with um, about it. As far as uh, college admission with my parents, I did it all on, on my own just trying to figure it out. I do know that my parents just wanted me to stay local and start at Nassau because of, of financial reasons. And I kind of wanted to go away, but I understood that um, because of the financial reasons I had to stay local, but going to apply and all that, that was all on my own. Once I was in Nassau, I kind of just learned how to do that on my own, including my bachelor's. I did all of my orientations, all that independently as well. What I wish I did know more about, um, like from high school, through my transition from, col uh, from high school to college is that financial help. I didn't know anything about scholarships, uh, financial aid. I tried to do it on my own. I didn't even know there was help out there to apply for that. So I think that's why I never really got that financial support. So everything is just out of pocket. And then once you go into your master's, you can't get any financial support. It's just it's all out of you. So that was that. So by the time I knew that I can get like scholarships financially, it was too late. I mean, I did get a scholarship when I studied abroad, but that was the only thing that I got.
high school, did they have like those assemblies where they get together and show you how to do this and that? Or was it like you said, like you had to do it on your own? Like, did you receive any type of help at all? Uh, so I believe my high school did offer that financial help. And I feel like they also did have like workshops after school, but I feel like I've never received that information. I never really was told exactly what financial aid was. I just, again, like I never knew what the word meant. I didn't know what it was for. I knew there was workshops, but I never was informed for what it was for. I met my school counselors, you know, just for advisement, but I never really, she never really told me, oh, okay, should attend this for financial support for college or tell your parents to come or we're going to offer it in Spanish. Like I never really given that information unless I was, I guess I feel like looking for it. I feel like who did receive that information was those students that I feel the school counselors felt that were legible for college and had those grades. Like I wasn't like, you know, an A plus student. I was like average student, barely making it. So I think because of my grades, they felt like, okay, well, is she really going to go to college type of situation? So that's kind of where I feel that's where my situation was at that moment. I don't know if I was wrong with at the moment. I didn't know, but I feel like now I feel like that's just what the case was. After that, you went to Nassau and where did you complete your bachelor's? So I went to Nassau for two years and then I went to SUNY Old Westbury to get a um, bachelor's in childhood education with bilingual extension focusing on working with undocumented children is there like another reason why you wanted to follow that activism yeah um I think only because um you know I have a lot of family um you know and, and people that I know that were undocumented um and I feel like I feel like this particular group um they're only seen as I guess society and I guess it goes back to like stereotype you know these groups of people they're only here to like take your jobs they're only here to you know or they're criminals or whatever the case may be but like I've seen a lot of potential in students actually want to go to school that they do want a career and I feel like these kids although they're like barely making it like through high school but I feel like because they don't have the support, although maybe they might have their parents or maybe they don't even have these their parents here, just trying to push them. Like their parents don't understand the educational system here. Or some of these kids that are in high school, they're also working full time and attending school full time. I feel like I understand that. I worked part time, but I also attended high school. So I guess I kind of resonate with these group of people. And although I'm not a newcomer, but I feel like we kind of make that connection as, as a first generation student. Now you're completing your master's, like when are you graduating and how has your experience been impacted by the pandemic? I actually graduate in May, so we're almost there. Um, definitely different experience. Uh, when I started my master's, um, I was doing everything hands-on. I was in a middle school. I was doing my internship, you know, one-to-one, -one, doing small groups, facilitating. Now virtual, I'm doing my internship through my college timeline, which is a totally different um, college admission process for me because actually never really worked with high school students. I was actually afraid to work with them because there's so much, they're at the level where they don't want to talk to adults or they also are like, oh yeah, like, you know, let's be best friends kind of situation. But definitely through my college timeline, um, I've learned so much as far as working with newcomer students, just understanding like the process of trying to uh, not just apply for college, but paperwork that it's involved in kind of make it impossible for these newcomers to apply for college. Like you have to fill out affidavits, immunizations, like all pretty much all the same thing as a regular student. But um, there's also like different hoops and cans they have to jump through in order to just apply for college. And even just within college, like you talk to different advisors, some of them are understanding for these students needs and some of them aren't. So definitely through an internship, I'm just learning to advocate for these students and just helping them along the way. What would you want to say to your old self if you could go back going through the admissions process or even after you found your niche and found out what you wanted to do and where you want to go? What is some advice that you leave to your old self and also to students who might be going through the same thing? Oh boy, what would I say to myself? That's always a good question, right? Um, listen, just push through. You got this. There is support out there. There is help out there. It's like a scavenger hunt. You just got to look for it. I know it's always not like in your face. 
and just always ask and don't be afraid to ask people for help because sometimes people are just like, let me just do it on my own. I know that was me. Just ask for support. There are people out there that are willing to help and support you. So just please don't be afraid to ask for that help and just keep moving forward. Those were all my questions. So thank you so much. Is there anything else I'd forgot to mention or I didn't touch upon that you wanted to cover? Um, I don't think so. I think we've reached everything, right? I think so too. But I would, I always like to ask in case I missed something. Yeah, no, of course. Okay. Thank you so much um, for being on the show. And uh, I hope everything goes well with your masters and that you graduate on time, which I'm sure you will. Yeah. Thank you so much for meeting you and we'll stay in touch, I suppose. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to stop this morning. Okay.